Well, hi everybody. My name is Scott Kelby and I'm the author of the book, The Photoshop CS6 Book for Digital Photographers. And I wanna tell you some really cool things about Photoshop CS6. Now, there was a beta version of Photoshop CS6. It's been around for, well, almost a couple of months now. So everybody already knows the big features. You, everybody knows about the improvements to Adobe Camera Raw and the amazing Content Aware Move and the oil painting filter and the video capabilities and the wide angle correction and the spinner. Today I wanna to show you stuff that nobody's talking about. It's really great stuff that Adobe added. It's some of those little things that really, really make a big difference, but you don't hear a lot about them in the news because all the big features are so amazing, nobody focuses on these. So let's start off with this one right here. Okay, so here we are inside Merge to HDR Pro. I've taken these five images from the mini bridge and opened them up here to combine them into this one image. Now, Merge to HDR Pro has two little tweaks in it that I think are very, very important. One of which is near and dear to my heart. They actually added one of my presets in here. It's called Scott 5 because it was the, the fifth preset I created. But anyway, it, it, it does a nice job. So if you just choose Scott 5 and it tones the image. So you have access to that. It's in you know, your copy of Photoshop CS6. However, this is the one I'm really excited about, edge smoothness. So what it does is look at the edges. They're a little bit harsh in here, which is kind of typical for this much you know, toning. But the edge smoothness, it actually brings out detail and at the same time it smooths the image. Watch, you just click on it and it does its thing, watch. And look at the difference. Here's before and after before and after. I find out though sometimes with this, it helps if you raise the strength back up just a little bit. If you're gonna turn on edge smoothness, raise the strength just a little bit and you get this look. So that's two little enhancements. Again, these are things you probably wouldn't notice, but uh, they actually make at least the HDR feature really, really work well. The next feature is something that they added. It's a set of presets for photographers that do photo toning. So you have like split tone effects that are very, very popular in fashion photography and things like that. What you do is you go here to the adjustment layer pop-up menu and we're going to choose gradient map. Now, when you bring it up, it makes a very nice black and white, but here's what's new. Let's click on the little gradient right here, go to the pop-out menu and look right there. This is brand new, photographic toning. So it, again, this is one of those things that's kind of buried, but it's really cool. It adds these new ones. We're gonna add those instead. And you get all of these split tone and duotone effects. There's a nice split tone there sepia midtones, different cyans, and they're all right here. And you have all these different looks that are actually based on real photographic things you used to do in the darkroom. For example, you can switch this to a large list and actually see the names. There's selenium, sepia tones, you'll have cyanotypes, different ones down here. Try these different looks. And they really are nice. I mean, they do a really, really nice job and it's built in. Again, one of those little hidden things that makes a big difference. The next one is just simply a user interface tweak that's kind of cool. So have you noticed, I guess the first thing you notice is the interface is dark. And it's always been light, light gray, and it always kind of looked like every other Adobe program. It looked like the Acrobat Reader or something. So I love that they changed the interface to dark. But you actually have a control over it. You can change it to, to a darker or lighter, and you can actually use a keyboard shortcut. If you press Shift, and F2, it will toggle the colors to, to lighter, and Shift F1 toggles it back to not only just as dark as we were, but all the way to this, all the way to black. So you can go for the dark gray, the default, all the way to black, and have your own custom interface and change it on the fly. Here's what the old one looked like. It was just kind of bright and looks old fashioned. Now it looks cool and high tech. There we go. Now there's some other little tweaks too. If you pull out your image here, oh, by the way, speaking of tweaks, you see the little mini bridge down here? So the mini bridge, it kind of defaults to film strip view now, so you can get to your images easily. If you double click, it tucks right away. So I'm gonna pull out this image, and you see this dark gray area back, back here? You actually have control over that as well. If you right click, it brings up different choices. You can choose light gray, medium gray, dark gray, black. Custom color, you can choose any color you want, which is great to play a prank on your friends. Just go to custom color, choose a dark red, and then just walk away. All right. Next, they brought something back to Photoshop that they took out in Photoshop CS5. It's back in Photoshop CS6 because people love it. Under the file menu, under automate, look, it's back, contact sheet two. So this thing makes contact sheets right inside of Photoshop and it actually does a really good job. I'll give you an example here. We're gonna choose a uh, folder of images, some motocross shots. 
You get to choose what size, inches, dimensions, whatever you want for your document that it's gonna make, how many columns you want, how many rows you want. You can you rotate it for the best fit. You can even add the file name as a caption. We'll skip that, but I'll show you what it does. We click OK and it's gonna take the folder of images and it does it pretty quickly and makes, look, makes the contact sheet completely for you. How sweet is that? And it's very, very fast. And you're thinking, why in the world did they take that out of Photoshop CS5? I have no idea. All right, I wanna do one more for you. Let me close this image. Let's double click back on mini grid bridge and it pops back up. They made a little tweak to the cropping that's very, very nice. I mean, there's a lot of things and you've probably seen these in all the videos that are out there that are talking about the big features, but here's one that you don't hear a lot about. I'm gonna click on the cropping tool here and let's hide the mini bridge, make this a little bigger. So the cropping tool, besides letting you just crop in, lets you crop out. So if you wanna add a real quick border around your image, like this, all you have to do is crop out. That's a little big. Crop it in a little bit like that. And you can get any size border you like by cropping outside of there. So I think that right there was pretty cool. Also, you can also change your aspect ratio on the fly. So if you wanted to change this to, no, I think I wanna do a square version of this or you wanna do uh, any, any different one, they're all built right in here. So that's kinda nice. Let's get this thing back down to normal. Let's go to unconstrained and I'll bring it back in here because I want to leave you with, actually it is a feature, but it's also kind of a Photoshop tip. So here, let's get it cropped back down to the side. Here's the tip. So I, when I crop, I like to have the image be the same dimensions as I started with. So in other words, normally you would hold the shift key and then you have to constrain it to where it doesn't change the dimensions or the aspect ratio of the crop, right? Well, there actually is a way to make constrained the original ratio of your photo to be the default. And the way to do that is to close the image to where nothing's up, get the crop tool, and then just choose original ratio. You just set the default now. So when I open up an image in the future, I won't have to hold the shift key anymore. It'll automatically be set to the original ratio so it crops with the same, basically, aspect ratio as the first one. There are so many other things because Adobe did this very cool thing. They did a thing called Just Do It, where they actually take a couple of weeks off from programming the big, amazing things, and they devote that time to fixing tons of little things. There's so many improvements throughout the program. They brought back PDF presentation. They added so many new things to the layers. I mean, it's, it's tremendous. It's much, much faster. Lots of tweaks, lots of enhancements. You already know all the big features. I hope you enjoyed this look at the little things in Photoshop CS6.